Hello and welcome to Griffin Art. Now, I understand if you feel that you've only just managed to pack away your Christmas decorations and you really don't feel like another major occasion. But Valentine's Day is looming up fast and so I just thought I'd show you how to create a heart-shaped napkin just in case any of you intend to make the 14th of February a special occasion. So this is going to be our end result and in order to achieve this I'm going to be working with a 40 centimeter square-ish paper napkin. Now for those of you who prefer to work in old measurements, 40 centimeters is approximately 15 and a half inches and that is when the napkin is fully opened out. Now although there's absolutely no reason why you can't reproduce this napkin fold with a fabric napkin, I'm sticking to paper today and I haven't done an equivalent in fabric because I don't actually have either a pink or red fabric napkin and it doesn't look quite the same in white so I'm sticking with the paper version today. Now as you may already know I always like to work on the basis that some of you may be working in fabric so the first thing I want to do is to open out this paper napkin so that we, um, we have the equivalent scenario that you will have if you're working with a square of fabric. So the first thing that you need to do is to just simply fold the fabric in half so uh, equally so you, you just create a crease along this central point. The first thing that I'm going to do is to bring this top corner here down to meet this edge here. And that tends to come into the central position as well, just for your information. So we're just creating a diagonal line across there. Just use my bone folder to firm up that crease so that's where we're starting and at that point you can open that back out again so you can see that diagonal line now i'm going to do the same in the opposite direction so it's this corner that's coming up to this edge here and i like to also try and line up that that crease line that i can see with this one on this side and that sort of tells me that i'm going to be keeping everything equal so again put that crease in and I can open that up and I've now got this cross shape on this side of the napkin and I'm simply going to do that to this other side as well so just it doesn't really matter which way you start from the top corner or the bottom corner but just bring those creases into place open up bring this corner and to repeat it to the other side just lining up those crease lines I prefer to line up the crease lines because they won't always line up if the um, napkin is not square. Now I always like to make sure that the creases that I put in are folding in the right direction and because we've been creating valley folds here, uh, the next set of folds also need to be valley, uh, well need to be mountain folds so it's easier to fold them on the other side of the napkin. So we're just going to flip that over the other way to start with. So the next thing that I want to do is to create a fold line that intersects the centre of this cross that, that we've created here with those other fold lines. So in doing that, if I'm just folding this over, and again, I'm keeping an eye on where those lines are folding up, I really want this line to lay on top of this line here as well, because that's going to help make sure that everything is nice and uh, equal. So make sure that the tip of that triangular point of cross is there. Just make sure that that's all lining up. And then we can put that line in place there. So we're just creasing that in. And then I'm going to do the same on this side as well. If I open one side of this up, we've actually got those mountain folds. It just means this will show you where these folds go into place without you having to force them too much. So you're just, what you're doing is you're creating these mountain folds in their entirety now. So you're forming the creases along them. And that means that those, those other valley folds that we created by flipping our, car, um, our napkin over are now going to rest in place. So that's all you're doing and then at that point you've got that sort of triangular shape just lay it down flat and form those creases again 
Okay, so you're ending up with that sort of shape. So now I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, but to the other side. So we're going to open up this half, sort of raise that center point and start to put those mountain folds in place on both sides. Bring the edges together and lay the whole thing flat so that you can flatten it all out again. Now at this point I need to turn the napkin over and I do tend to always flip the napkin on its horizontal um, axis. So uh, sort of left to right or right to left and that way you know that you're always in the right position for the folds. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is, you can see we've got a couple of layers here and you're taking the just the top section and the top point and you're going to bring this point here to this point here to form a small triangular, triangular shape. So, just again, if it's if your napkin isn't quite square, then you know you might end up with bunching here. Just make the best of, that uh, you can of it. And I tend to line this edge up with this the the edge of the main shape as well. So that might help you a little bit. So you're just forming a triangle like that. So if I show you there, okay. Now at this point we need to create a square, so we just open up the section here. So let me just bring that to the camera again. So we're just opening up so that you've got just those two layers on either side if you've got a, a two-ply napkin. And then we're just going to bring this corner here, this point, down to the other point to create a square. So let me just do that. Sometimes if you've got a bone folder it helps just to get into the corner and form the corner a bit and then you can flatten it all out, create the square. Okay, now if I just point something else out to you as well, there is a sort of crease line here that you can see, and again, you really want that to lay on top of this crease line as well, and that will help to keep everything lined up nicely for you. Now we do need to repeat that so that we've got a symmetrical shape. So it's simply a question of working, you know, in the opposite direction at times, so you working from one corner, so the tip of one corner, to the other corner always. So you're folding in that direction all the time, lining up these edges as I said, and then bringing that down into that square shape. Okay, so we've got two done, then we can do the same here, corner to corner. Open up. You know, I'm rushing a little bit because um, I don't want to take up too much of your time and as long as you get the main gist of it. But it is quite nice to keep an eye on the little corner here, make sure it's sitting nicely. Last one. Then I'll let you have a look and see what it looks like. So. There we go. So you end up with four square shapes in the center of your piece. So the next thing that we're going to do is to form a little kite shape with each of these square sections. So you've got this line, if I bring that up to the camera for you, whoops, everything's falling apart. There we go. So you've got this central crease line and that's what you're going to be working to in the first instance. So you're just taking the corner here that's, that's in the middle of your square and you're folding it over so that it meet, this edge here meets up with that crease line. So you're just bringing that up to the edge there and it's starting, you'll see in a minute, that it's starting to create a kite shape. So I hope you can see that all right. So you've just got this edge that was along here is now meeting up with that central crease line and we're going to do the same to the other side. So just bring that up. And just form those creases nicely so again I'll show you close up so you're forming that sort of kite shape there I hope you can see if those were flattened down you've got that sort of shape going on now we need to do the same thing to these three other squares so in the interest of time I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back to you Okay, so that's all of those kite shapes in place. You can see that the edges of these tend to pop up because there's not much um, distance to these. So, you know, that's their natural 
habit to, to just raise open again. Now at this point, we are going to need to open out these middle sections. And I just want to tell you, if you are working with um, a multi-ply napkin, then it can sometimes be difficult to actually find in amongst these layers where the actual middle is. Now, if you're struggling with that at all, just simply lift one of these edges slightly and then you can find, you can see there that that's the middle layer. So you can work in that way. So I've already got that layer there. So what you're doing with each of these sections that you've just formed on the edge of these kites, so every kite has two the same, you're finding that central layer. And you, what you're wanting to do is bring the crease line that you can see on the outside in line with this line in the center here, and then you're flattening it out. I'll bring it to the camera so that you can see that more clearly. So just flatten out the edges there to create a tiny little triangular shape at the top. So let me just show you close up. So I don't know whether you can make it out, but there is actually a crease line here. And I hope that you can see that I'm lining it up so that it's a continual straight line through along that line there. And if you've done that, you're on the right track. Now we do need to do that to every single of these. So I need to repeat that process seven more times. So I'll do that off camera again and come back to you when I've finished. Okay, so that's all of those little sections complete. So if I bring that to the camera, hopefully you can see how that's now beginning to look. Now at this stage, we are going to flip our napkin over the other way. But as I say, I normally uh, flip it from right to left or left to right so that I know where I am with the napkin fold. What you need to do, because you've obviously twisted this around to, to achieve all of these shapes, if you've got this open line here running in a horizontal rather than a vertical fashion, you just need to rotate your napkin fold before you flip it over to make sure that it's actually that gap is running in a more vertical way. So all we need to do is just being careful of these folds that we put in place. We don't want to um, crease them in any other way than they are already creased. So just carefully fold your napkin over can apply a little pressure that won't do any harm at this stage then we're just going to take this very top point and we're going to fold it down to come to the point at the bottom almost to meet it it won't it probably won't quite meet it because there's a certain amount of bulk but you can fold it down and then form a crease along that sort of crease line that's already showing there okay form all those creases there now the next thing that we need to do is just Elim eradicate these points. So they're a little bit pointy for a heart shape. So we're going to fold them in. Now, it's up to you how much you fold these in. You can be creative about it, but I'm going to tell you what I do, and then you can decide whether you want to follow suit. Now, I hope you can see at the top here, we have this, it's this little angle here, and there is a slight point or corner in this area of our shape. So what I try to do is I bring this out a point and fold it over so that it is approximately in line with that corner but is also on that natural crease line that we've got going across here. So if I just fold that and crease it, I can then bring it up to the camera to show you. Okay, so I hope you can see a little better where that point is. So I've tried to line it up approximately with that. It's going to enable you to do the same the other side and then you should get an equidistant um, fold and it'll look symmetrical still. But at the same time, that the point of this triangle is resting on this line, this crease line that's going across there. So that's what you're aiming for. So having done that to that side, I'm just going to repeat the process to this side. So I've got my corner sort of quite a uh, shallow corner up there. I'll bring that over. It's quite a bulk of fabric there or material there now. So there we go, it's about right. And put that crease in place as well. Now they don't hold in well because of the bulk of material that you're dealing with. So, um, but don't worry about that. As long as you've folded those over, that's all you need to do. Now at this point, we can just flip our napkin fold over again and just check that all your folds are nicely in place till where they need to be and that's your heart shape complete. 
So that's just a short video project for you. Now, I have generated a free downloadable instruction sheet to help you with that fold. So if you're interested in that, you can download that from my website at griffinart.co.uk and I will include a link in the description area of this video for that document so that you can find it easily. Now, just in case it is of interest to you, I am going to be introducing a few more napkin folds onto my channel over the next few months. So if that's of interest, please subscribe to my Griffin Art channel. It would be great to have you on board. Finally, a big thank you for your time today and hopefully you'll be able to join me again for future tutorials.